Six things that aspiring or new UI designers commonly get wrong. What are those? The pukey mix, too many tools, child's play, everything's a box, the mix matcher, and the highlighter. What the hell are these stupid names? Well, they're just dumb names that I came up with to describe common UI design flaws that you see in the work of aspiring UI designers. So we're gonna take a look at examples of each of these, and then I'm gonna show you how to fix them. So as always, make sure to subscribe, and let's get started. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably want to be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients and jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship, where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the coupon code UI2022, and that will give you 22% off at checkout. All right, here we go. Here's the very first one. I call this the pukey mix. I mean, honestly, I, I suck at coming up with names, but I just, I feel like it makes me wanna puke when I see these type of color combinations. And that is specifically putting any type of colored type of background element, like a card, for instance, as seen here, on top of or near a gray, like this gray right here. I, it just never, never looks good. And it doesn't make, matter if I change the color here, it's just not going to look good when you have it on gray. So you have a few different options for this type of thing. So you could take it and make it white, like the card background. You could also make the background the other color right here, but you don't want to have these two colors matching. We can also see in this example I found the same sort of thing. We have these kind of pastel color cards with these hard drop shadows that are gray and you just lose what's called color contrast and it looks really, really, really bad. Here's another example right here, like this search bar, you can see there's a, a very, like kind of like a, a very soft shadow around it and it was, as well as in this hamburger menu and it's a blue, light blue color, it just doesn't look good. Always avoid that sort of thing. Don't put yourself into the pukey mix box, okay? Too many tools. So this means if you're a new or aspiring UI designer, I, you start to learn the apps like Figma or Sketch or Adobe XD or whatever, and you start to learn that you have all these cool effects that you can add to your design. So what do we do? We think that more is better. That's not the case when it comes to UI design, typically 99% of the time. I, we want to avoid this sort of thing. For, for instance, we have a little bit of new morphism aesthetic right here on this, this card right here, this cool little backer. It looks cool, right? But you can easily overdo it, especially when you combine it with a bunch of other things. Uh, we have a text-based gradient shadow, gra gradient rather. We have an outer glow on this one. Uh, we have a gradient in the background in which everything's sitting. Uh, if you strip that stuff all away, it's just so much more pleasing to the eye. This is kind of like the old school approach, and it's also an approach that you see a lot of newcomers to UI design make. They think that because they have access to all these, you know, these different effects, they should use them. And that's not true. You can use them, but use them sparingly and in the, the correct context. But when you're starting out, forget all that stuff. Stick to the basics and the simplicity of this type of aesthetic over here without the strokes, without the clay morphism, new, morph new morphism, skew morphism, all the orphisms that you want, the strokes, the gradients, just forget all of them. Stick to something like this. Next up, child's play. All right. This is something I see a lot when it comes to uh, aspiring UI designers and like their portfolios, for instance, and maybe in their hero sections. I, these type of illustrations, I, I believe a lot of these are from a popular library called Undraw. And while Undraw is great, uh, in many cases, you wanna use something that's better in terms of your illustration quality. I, and plus, these are really quite overused, especially you know among UI designers and their portfolios. Let me show you um, how to make this example a thousand times better just by changing the illustration that's on the right. So, look at that. 
Now, if you're a potential client or you're trying to hire somebody and you saw this in their portfolio versus this in their portfolio, of course, this looks a thousand times better. Now, you may be wondering, where can I find stuff like that? Well, you know, especially for free, the Figma community is a great place to, to I do a search for this type. In fact, I found this, this asset on the Figma community and it was free. So definitely think and give, give yourself, give, give thought to the type of illustrations you're using in your designs because they can really make or break a design in and of themselves. All right, next time, or next up rather, everything's a box. <laughs> Here's a few examples. This is an, an example of somebody taking a high contrast box of some sort and wrapping it, all the all their content inside of the box. We've got a box here, high contrast box there. It makes things look boxy. Same example, example here. It doesn't necessarily have to be a background. It could be a high contrast border in which everything is a box. It just breaks the flow of the layout and it's just, most of the time, 99% of the time, it's not a great aesthetic. Here's another example of everything's a box. Now, there are different ways to approach you know, this type of design. You could use a very low contrast box, uh, or maybe you don't have to box things in because it makes it look so boxy. Here's an example right here. This is from Stripe, uh, Stripe's website. Notice the content here. They didn't put everything in boxes. There's a, there's a box right here, we call it a card, uh, but Outside of that, everything's kind of just given room to breathe, and that's what you want. All right, the mix matcher. This simply means somebody who is not applying their design aesthetics in a cohesive and consistent manner. And this can come in many different forms. For instance, this form right here. I don't know why they have just a line here. It's just meant to be maybe the bottom of a, of a, of a text field with a floating label. Uh, but then this one, we see it clearly, it, the, whole, the whole form element is outlined in a high contrast stroke. You should stick with this aesthetic on all of your elements. Here's another example where we have not enough white space here inside of these cards. You can see this text is just right up against the edge. But then we come down here, they did have great white space except underneath this uh, learn more button. But around the text here, this looks very solid. So not enough white space. You wanna make sure uh, when it comes to white space in many of the UI design fundamentals that you're applying them consistently within the same design. And this obviously applies to color schemes. Uh, this applies to alignment, white space, et cetera, et cetera. The highlighter, all right. So I see this a lot as well. I, UI designers, especially newcomers, will apply a, a lot of color or the same color to text all over the place. So it's kind of like a highlighter, it's the same color. I'm gonna show you how we could take this type of design and greatly improve it just by changing the color of the text or rather getting rid of the color. So let me f come up here, there we go. All right, so this is much more pleasing to the eye. So I took several of these elements, especially your headline. I made this one black. I made this type black. I made these over here from this little tab navigation, I made those black as well. Now, of course, there's other things wrong with this design, but the only thing I did wanna change was just not to oversaturate the type with color, all right, especially red. I More often than not, you just wanna have a highlight color or an accent color that you use to place on important text-based items. For instance, they did do a good job up here by emphasizing the active state in the accent color. You don't wanna add it on all the other elements as well. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to subscribe, go to designcourse.com, check that out as well. If you wanna see more of these type of videos, because of course I can come up with maybe more than just six examples of things that UI designers commonly get wrong, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.